What is going on guys? Jack here and welcome to the first episode of Work the Space FC here on 90 Minute Fever. If you're sat here going what the hell is this game you missed yesterday's video go check it out. Uh, there is a load of details in that video about this game and I also talked about how you can get on this game for free for two months. So I think it's worth checking out if this game piques your interest and today we kind of start the first episode of what I, d I don't want to call it a let's play necessarily because with this game the seasons last a month I'm kind of just going to be documenting to my kind of progress as a team I guess talk about my squad in this first episode it's just gonna be a general introduction to some of my key players a bit of an overview as to how I've been getting on uh, my initial kind of first few weeks in the game uh, to really give us a platform to go off so hopefully you enjoy this I have got to be a little bit careful I guess because with this series obviously a lot of you guys are also playing this game and I don't want to say too much about what I'm thinking because I feel like people might take advantage of that but anyway here we can see uh, my team overview and uh, I don't really know where to start. I guess the first thing to do is start with the the squad here. And um, when you first pick up this game, I know for people who have, um, you know, jumped into this game following yesterday's video, one thing that people kind of asked me was, what, what's the first thing I should be doing? I honestly think the first thing you should do is look at your squad, assess what your best formation is going to be, where you need to strengthen. And um, before I get into this, just one little tip, because I've had people ask me, you know, how do I know how much a player's worth? Well, uh, by default, at least, on your home screen here, you will have a list of all the auctions going on. If you right-click on a player and add to shortlist and do it for all the players who are going for a value, um, the game will tell you when that auction is over, how much the player ended up going for. So that can be quite a good way just to get to grips with the pricing in the game. And I do think that is uh, one of the things that perhaps when you start, you're not entirely sure on. So anyway, let's give an introduction to my team here. And uh, the first thing to say is this is a team that's largely consisting of players which I had when I first kind of started the game. I know I was talking to a few subscribers in the chatting game and one of them had one of the best left backs I've ever seen in the game in his starting team. So he was delighted. Unfortunately, I wasn't quite so blessed. I had a few fairly good players. Um, kind of the big problem I had really was I had a really good defence for the most part. I had one solid attacker in Ozkan Ozkan and in midfield it was just a bit... It, I don't want to say meh, I had one really good playmaker who I actually ended up selling because he could only play centre attacking mid. And um, yeah, there was a little bit of work to be done in terms of the transfer. So let's have a look at what is kind of my current starting eleven. And uh, we start in goal actually with this guy, De Bruyne. That's probably not how you say his name, but it's how I'm going to go with it. Dutch viewers, please shout at me and tell me I'm wrong. Uh, I actually signed him fairly recently. I got him for a really, really cheap fee of £65,000, uh, which is a bargain. He's 32 years old. And as you can see here, he's played 10 games for me with a 6.8 average rating. And in the league, a 7.5 average rating. He's been a very good player for me since I brought him in. I didn't really intentionally bring this guy in to be a first choice goalkeeper but it was kind of just uh, a deal that happened. Uh, my starting goalkeeper when I first joined was this guy Vasilev uh, who is a Russian player. He's well known in the game world. Uh, I've had a few people ask about reputation. Is that ability? No. If you play this game the star ratings are not an indication of ability but rather how frequently that player's profile is viewed or the player is bid on by other managers. So it's kind of a, a, a gauge of notoriety in the game world. So anyway Vasilev here you can see a lot of people, people have been looking at him and he's been a good goalkeeper for me. He's just not quite performed. I think he was a, perhaps a little bit of a victim of the fact that I was building my team and kind of sorting out and tinkering with formations with him in goal and there were some games where it just didn't work for me and particularly when I was doing some transfers uh, kind of one of the issues I had basically was that I didn't really have a cohesive kind of full 11 and as a result we conceded goals and the goalkeeper ratings in this game at the moment seem quite heavily dependent on kind of how many goals they concede as opposed to how many saves they make uh, but he's a very good keeper you can see here I have actually got him transfer listed at 1.25 million pounds uh, I did have a bid of £1 million from the 28-year-old. I rejected that. In hindsight, maybe I should have accepted it, but I feel like £1.25 is a fairly fair price in the going market. And you can see, looking at his attributes, he is a very good goalkeeper. So he's our second choice. As I said, De Bruyne, it's not how we say his name, but that's how I'm going to say it. Uh, a good player, 20 determination, not the greatest physicals, 32. Old a little bit, perhaps, but he's got a few seasons in him. And uh, he has performed so far for me. Anyway, let's move on to the defence, and uh, starting with our left-back here, we have Wissit Say. Um, I feel like every time I say his name, I think of Jason Derulo, watch his say, because it's kind of like his name. I can imagine the fans cheering that from the uh, from the kind of stadium. But anyway, this guy, I signed him for fairly cheap, as you can see, £390,000, which is a very good deal, I think, at the moment, at least. The, the prices in this game, obviously, if you've not tried out this game, I encourage you to do so, and you can check out the last video, as I already said at the start. But the transfer market is very user-driven, so the prices do change quite a lot. 
I think I've actually got a fairly good deal for this guy. As you can see, he's 23 years old. He is Thai, uh, which a bit of an obscure nationality. I actually have another Thai player with the exact same last name. And uh, looking at him as a fullback, you can see he is... Um, kind of proficient in the left midfielder position but for me he is playing left back I like the fact he's got good tackling and reasonable marking uh, he's got good flair and good um, kind of crossing and dribbling so going forward he's very good I think the kind of area where it perhaps collapses in on him is uh, his physicals he's not the fastest player and can't really you know get up and down the wing that great he's not got the greatest work rate and additionally he has got high injury proneness so that's perhaps why I got him for as cheap as I did I still think he's a very very good left back however and the fact he can play left mid is of course a, a nice little bonus and he can also play wing back so late on in a game if I'm chasing a goal he's the kind of player I can just push slightly on a bit in hopes of him you know perhaps doing something for me Anyway, at right back we go with Saez. He was one of the players who was here when I first came to the club. No one's really looked at him. I've not had any bids on him. I'm quite happy about that, to be honest. At 30 years old, a good player. A lot more of a defensive kind of fullback than perhaps say. He's 30. He's got great decisions, great determination and good anticipation. His physicals are fairly solid. Perhaps his natural fitness lets him down just a little bit. Um, but really, he's kind of just a really defensive fullback for me. Great marking, great tackling, reasonable, reasonable technique. Going forward, as I said, not the greatest, but... Um, you know, he can play centre-back as well, and perhaps centre-back is a position I'd consider playing him in more if it wasn't for his poor jumping and heading. But really, um, at this early stage, I guess, in my team's kind of history, I can't go around changing the entire team and trying to basically build a new eleven from scratch because of the way the game world works and the fact you can only sign players off other kind of managers in-game. So I'm pretty happy with Sires at right-back. As you can see, low injury proneness. He's got a few seasons in him, certainly. And uh, he's a useful little defensive fullback for us. Anyway, at centre back, we have here uh, Bottomed Cantor, the Hungarian, the club record transfer. £1.4 million paid for him, which is a lot of money. Um, I originally bid 500k and the, the guy who kind of previously managed him accepted that bid. I was a little bit surprised by that, perhaps a newer manager who wasn't quite sure on kind of player values. In the end, £1.4 million he went for in the auction system. I, I worry that I've overpaid here, but then I look at the fact he's 24. Uh, in terms of the technicals, heading, marking, tackling, they're the three core ones I look for. The fact his passing's not too bad is nice as well. In terms of his mentals, anticipation I love, good decisions, good determination. He can read the game, reasonable teamwork. Tenacity maybe would be nice to be a little bit better, but he's got good vision as well. His work rate does let him down a little bit. As you can see, he can play uh, centre-back, which is where I am playing him. Uh, and he can also play centre mid, but I kind of feel like in the midfielder position, I'm a little bit deterred because of his passing and also his first touch and dribbling. And uh, also his work rate, I guess, as well, is a bit of a an area where perhaps it collapses in on him. And he doesn't, although he has great vision, the fact his passing's not great and his composure's not great, it means that he's not really that good with the ball at his feet. So as a centre back, I think he's fantastic. And I kind of, you know, I've highlighted the fact. In terms of defensively, he's outstanding. And his physicals, they kind of live up to that as well. 19 natural fitness, amazing pace, amazing acceleration, low injury proneness. A fantastic player. As I said, perhaps overpaid for him. But as a centre-back option, I think he's really good. And actually, when I came to the club, one of the kind of dilemmas I had was basically my defence very very solid for the most part but it was old and it was kind of a decision of do I want to try and re rebuild the defense a little bit getting a few younger players which is what I've done uh, or did I want to stick it out with the oldies for a few years and see how they got on ultimately I've cashed in on a few defenders brought in say and Cantor and they've done well for us anyway the next center back uh, is Marin here Mohamed Marin he's a Spanish player Great uh, in the air, you can see 17 jumping, 17 heading. 29 years old, he was here when I came to the club. He's played 100 friendlies for me already. Five goals and nine assists, it's not too bad. In terms of him, perhaps a little bit limited when it comes to his mentals. I'd like that anticipation and decisions to be a little bit better, but elsewhere, really can't fault him on too many areas. He's great defensively in terms of his technicals. Perhaps his passing lets him down a little bit. Again, he's got good vision, just not got the passing or composure to be a ball-playing player. Uh, but nevertheless, he's been good for me. Uh, rate him highly. Perhaps his pace could be a little bit better, but 29 years old, three or four seasons certainly left in him. And uh, I'm excited to see how he kind of gets on in that centre-back position. Anyway, we move now on to the midfield. And, well, if you didn't notice, I'm playing a 4-3-3, kind of with a defensive midfielder. And this is the defensive midfielder I have, Wu Jin Song. He is a Korean player. He's actually a player who, when I first joined the game, I had a £500,000 bid on him immediately. And... Uh, 
well, I rejected it because I didn't understand the pricing system and kind of how much a player was worth. And he really has been a good player for me. Perhaps his average ratings don't really indicate that. As I said, I've been tinkering with my tactics a lot. It's only really been in the last few days that I've really settled on a system. And um, this guy, you know, he's good. His determination could be a little bit better. But in terms of as a player, you can break down the play. Also has fantastic passing and good vision. He's a good player. Uh, I like him. Really would never consider playing him at centre-back, if I'm honest. But as a centre midfielder and a kind of defensive midfielder, he's done a very good job for me. So, again, as I said, really can't fault him. Anyway, going forward, we now get on to Frederick Stewart, the Englishman, a player who I signed for £625,000 this season. I'm delighted with that. I think a large reason behind him going for so cheap was his lowish natural fitness. But you can see for me, uh, he's been fantastic. 24 goals in 46 games in friendlies, an average rating of 7.24. In the league, not quite as convincing just yet. Only the one goal in eight games with an average rating of 6.75. Um, really, his natural fitness is the only area where I can fault his game. Perhaps his determination as well. But as a, a player who can play kind of everywhere in the midfield and can also play as a striker and kind of be a last-ditch option, he's uh, been a very good player for us. I love the fact that he's got good vision and good finishing. You can see his composure and off the ball aren't too bad. He could very much play as a striker if we need him to. Got good long shots. Again, his passing could be a little bit better, but because of the great passing I actually have in the midfield, particularly in the centre alongside him, his goal scoring prowess really, really is valuable to me. Anyway, the next centre mid is Marion or Marlon, sorry, Hubner, uh, who is a German player, 23 years old, a younger player. Good flair, really nice physicals, great passing, reasonable vision, high injury proneness, perhaps one of the weaker links in my team if I'm honest, uh, but nevertheless still a very useful player. You can see 8 goals and 10 assists in the 63 uh, kind of friendly games he's played. Uh, he's a player who I have been experimenting with perhaps other players stepping into his position, but he's done a job for us, 23, could still develop a little bit. Uh, I think we could get some decent cash from him as well if we want to. Anyway, the next player we have is Pereira. He is a Brazilian, as you can see, three and a half star reputation. Signed him for £1.125 million, which is quite a hefty fee. But at 22 years old, a fantastic player who can play on either wing, has 18 determination. Really only his crossing kind of lets him down a little bit. Moderate injury prone is not something I'm too worried about. Kind of excited to see how this guy can develop. Obviously, 22, not a wonder kid anymore at this point. Uh, but a player who I do think can be very, very useful for me. And you can see in the league games he's played, well, averagely with a 6.08 rating. In friendlies, he's been a little bit better. And I'm hoping that will soon translate kind of into the league games that he takes part in. Anyway, out on the left, or sorry, out on the right at the moment, I actually have Mohamed Cox. <sighs> I don't really know what to say about this guy. He was here when I joined the club. He's been an okay player, more so as a backup kind of striker than anything. Really, I feel like the one position I need a new player in is uh, out wide in the attacking midfielder positions. Mohamed Cox actually in for an injured player or suspended player at the moment. I can't remember which it is. He's a good player, though, just a little bit one-dimensional. Has great composure, has good off the ball, really, really nice pace and physicals. You know, a great kind of impact sub could be a very useful striker if you want to play kind of a little and large man. But for me, he's been okay. He's probably for sale. So if you sat there thinking, I need a striker, I need someone who can play either wing, you, you, maybe have a look at Mohamed Cox. Anyway, star striker right now at least is Ozkan Ozkan, Turkish player, 25 years old, 41 goals and 14 assists in 99 friendly games. In the league, he gets a goal every other game, which isn't too bad at all. His average ratings are some of the best in the team. And uh, the Turkish player had been a fantastic player for me. Initially, I actually played him in a wide midfielder role. And the reason for doing that was basically that I was playing a 4-4-1-1. Kind of with a flat four in midfield. One centre attacking mid and one striker. And uh, Ozkan Ozkan just wasn't playing there. The tactic and the team has evolved since then. I've strengthened it in areas I wanted to. And now he is kind of out and out striker. And he's done great since moving there. So anyway, that's kind of the starting eleven. Uh, I could spend ages talking about all these players, but I feel like they're the players to be most familiar with. In terms of a few other squad players perhaps to be a, uh, kind of aware of, we have here Vincente Munoz, Chilean, 31 years old, uh, good defender. The issue I have with him is he's 31. I mean, he'd be an outstanding kind of player for someone who needs a really good defender and I don't really want to let him go cheap because he is a great backup to have but unfortunately he's just he just doesn't quite fit into my team with Cantor coming in the 24 year old uh, Munoz is perhaps a little bit better than him now but at age 31 you know I want to try and cash in on him whilst I can so uh, he is available I don't know how much I'd let him go for if I'm honest he's a bit of a weird player because he's got 14 finishing as a centre Back. And I have actually played him as a centre defensive mid on the odd occasion. And he's really not been too bad there. But anyway, definitely a player to be kind of 
uh, noted if we do have suspensions or injuries at the back he is kind of the go-to player Liam Robertson or sorry Robinson uh, perhaps one of the best players we have in the team in terms of youngsters 16 years old 16 determination amazing physicals good tackling good technique looks like he could be a great defensive midfielder in the future his heading is just a little bit of a deterring factor from me playing him as a centre-back maybe he could play as a full-back but again his crossing and dribbling not quite there definitely see his long-term future as kind of a big anchor man for us but at 16, I signed him this year on a free transfer. He was a player who was released. Don't really want to sell him. I'd be interested to see if anyone comes in for him next season when he's available, though, because he is probably the best hot prospect we have. Anyway, to quickly blitz for a new, pl a few more players here, we have here Philip Novak. He's a Czech player, 21, great determination, good midfielder, came in for a modest fee of £400,000, but can play anywhere kind of across the midfield as well as a, as a right wing back. And uh, I do like him. He's uh, played fairly well, you can see, in two league games. He came off the uh, on off the bench once. Got an 8.0 average rating. Really can't complain about that one little bit. Anyway, Krupa and Fischer, two wide men. Krupa, a Polish man who we uh, we brought in. Great player. Got him in for fairly cheap. With my current system, I am playing with attacking midfielders, so that's a little bit of an issue at the moment, but still a useful player to have. Uh, we also have Oscar Fischer here, who's a German with outstanding physicals. Again, can only play in the wide midfielder role as opposed to an attacking midfielder role. Brought him in this year on a free, though. Feel like he was a good bit of business to get done. And uh, the last player we have, Luke Reynolds here, a player who I uh, brought in for £200,000. He's a good midfielder. His physicals kind of let him down in terms of his endurance and natural fitness, but he's the kind of player who we can throw on if we need to get an experienced head in midfield. Quite good defensively. 18 marking really stands out. His tackling could be better. High injury proneness. New player to the team. Don't really know quite where he fits in, but we got him in for a fairly cheap fee. At age 31, I think he's got a few years in him, and uh, his experience could be fairly valuable in the side. Anyway, as you can see, my team is pretty big. I have got a few players being sold right now, such as Matthias Nerdson, who's a, a good little player. Unfortunately, by the time you see this video, his auction may well be over. But uh, to kind of put him in the shot window, so to say, he's a good poacher, good finishing, reasonable physicals, his pace is good, his anticipation good, his composure and off the ball are good. He's the kind of player who is a bit of a one-dimensional striker, but if he gets a chance, he'll take it. He's only played eight league games for me, uh, three of which he came on off the bench. And as you can see, he's got two goals and two assists. Really not been a bad player for me by any means. And um, I think if a team gets him for £400,000, that'd be a, a fairly good deal for them, if I'm honest. Anyway, one more player I'll talk about. In fact, no, two more players I'll talk about real quickly. Dylan Griffins, uh, this or Griffith, sorry. This guy, Welsh, centre-back or centre-mid. He's a good player for me. In fact, he's a very good player in general. I just feel like... He's not quite a centre-back for me. He's not better than my centre-backs, and he's not better than my midfielders. He has 18 determination. He's got great physicals and some nice technicals. I just feel like it might be worth letting him go. He's 24 years old, Welsh. If you're looking for a play, he might be a man. He has been injured a little bit lately, but he's back to full fitness now. Um, a play was initially kind of one of my starting centre mids, but with perhaps some of the players I've added, a change in system, he's just not really in the picture for me right now. The last player I'll talk about is a player who I mentioned earlier who suspended who kind of has been my go-to starting right attacking mid as of late. It's this guy, Alessio Serra. He's Italian, two-star reputation, um, good crossing, good dribbling, really nice physicals, good determination, 23 years old, does a job for me, and the fact he can play either kind of position out wide is kind of useful too. Anyway, I appreciate that is a lot of information to take in, but I feel like it's important in this first episode to kind of introduce you to the team. As I said when I started, my midfield was a little bit lacking, and I have added a few useful players there. The likes of Pereira out wide, Frederick Stewart, who as I mentioned has been a great goal scorer, and uh, also Cantor and Say and uh, Bruyne. Um, there's you know there's five kind of players who weren't at my team there initially, and I feel like I have been a little bit of a victim, as I said, and perhaps my my players' average ratings have been a victim of the fact I've not really been settled on a system. It's been kind of changed and kind of chopped around fairly frequently. In terms of my system right now. I don't want to show my tactics if I can avoid it because I feel like I can show you guys too much if you're playing me. But this is the system I'm playing. I don't want to show my sliders just yet. Perhaps in the future, uh, I'll kind of backlog these videos a little bit so there's a few days delay kind of thing. But anyway, you can see the uh, the kind of start in 11 here in terms of how it looks. Um, it's a fairly standard shape. It's been serving me pretty well as of late. If I quickly show you the calendar... And we look at the results that I've had. You can see when I first started the game, and if you if you picked up this game, you might have experienced the same thing. I lost 
What's that? What? Uh, well, eight of my first nine games. Like, it was a struggle. I didn't really know about my team. And if I could give some advice to people, it would be to look at their starting 11s. And uh, particularly in this game, to if you, if you don't really know who to play where, put your oldest player in every position in position. And generally, that will be close to your strongest team. And I wish someone had told me that sooner. Because as you can see, I got slaughtered to begin with in this game. Uh, I was playing a little bit before the public release with these games here. So I was playing against other experienced players, of course, at the moment. Lots of new players. And, well, I tried not to let that deter me. And things have got good for me as of late. As I said, a bit of a rebuild process kind of going on throughout the last few weeks for me. And the losses have been fairly frequent. But if we look at my recent games, with the exception of the two losses I've had recently, which I feel like I was a little bit unlucky with I've been on a really nice run of form I think I lost something like one game in 14 which is like a ridiculously good record obviously in a player versus player environment it's tailed off a little bit as of late I feel like I was unlucky in both those games I was kind of sat uh, whilst I was going on this run thinking should I just record the video now while I'm in a good run and uh, I kind of wish I had because those two losses really take away from it but you can kind of see with a settled system my team has started to play uh, fairly well which is good to see of course, this is my first month as a manager, so much like a lot of you guys who have picked up this game, I'm currently in uh, the qualifying FA. I'm in qualifying League 11. If we look at where I am at the moment, I'm currently second. I have played substantially more games than a lot of the other teams in the league. Uh, of course, the season's going to be wrapping up in about two weeks' time. In terms of my projected points, it's only 52, which is substantially lower than perhaps some other teams in the league who have played less games. I do feel like, however, kind of my recent form means that I should feel fairly confident going forward. Uh, I played We Are Shit. I assume that's how I'm meant to say that name, uh, in a recent game. Uh, and I actually drew against them, which I was pretty happy with, because as you can see, they've played 23 as well, and they've only lost four of 23 games. So to get a draw against them... I don't think it was a bad result by any means, and obviously this doesn't mean too much, this qualifying FA, because this is all about getting to grips with the game, and um, yeah, I feel like it's going okay at the moment. I have had a few people ask um, when they join the game, and I'm going to just go through a few minor tips now while they're on kind of the top of my head to wrap up this episode. When you first play the game, as I said, I recommend sorting out your team, working out who your key players are, perhaps playing your oldest start in 11 as a starting point. If you want to play a game, um, in your league tab here, it'll show you who is online within your league. If you go to your calendar, you will see uh, dates that fixtures are due. So if I just show you real quick here, uh, these are the due dates for all these fixtures where they should be played by. You basically have a week between the game becoming available to be played and the date it's due to be played. And when you and the other manager are both online, uh, you can play your game. So that's kind of how that works. Uh, in terms of um, friendlies and stuff, if you know no one on your league's online, people don't seem to know this, but if you right-click on Request Match, you can just select Super Friendly League. I talked about this in the last video, but essentially the Super Friendly League is just a big ladder where you can play as many games as you want against other players, and it keeps track of your total points and total goals and all that jazz. I think at the moment I am on a negative kind of win-to-loss ratio, but uh, if you look here, I am 43rd with 23 wins, 15 draws, and uh, 35 losses. But um, I feel like I'm, I'm kind of just giving excuses here. But my team has been being rebuilt and I have been playing against people who have been playing the game for a month ahead of me. So anyway, that's kind of my squad in a nutshell right now. I have noticed the DB Dynamos is online in my league and I do have a league game kind of scheduled. So I'm going to quickly ask them if they want to play uh, our league game whilst I ramble on. So I wasn't really pl um, planning... Uh, what you call it? I wasn't really planning to do a, a league game or a match this episode, but if I can get it played on camera, why not do it? Unfortunately, I can't. I can't type and talk at the same time. My brain cannot kind of process me writing a conversation whilst trying to talk. So we'll see if he gets back to me quickly, Derico. If you look here on my calendar, he manages DB Dynamos, and if we just look at my available games, I do have a game available away from home against him, which needs to be played by the 26th, so in nine days' time. So. If we can get that game played now, that would be that would be pretty convenient. I'm going to just tick competitive games and hit request match and hope that he requests at the same time or at least messages me back, which he has done. Okay, he's playing a game at the moment. Should we, should we could go and watch his game. I'll tell you what I do. I don't want to sit here rambling. I'm going to cut forward to when we get into the game against him. Hopefully we can get a win to cap off episode one here. And uh, yeah, I will be back in just a second. Okay, guys, so I think we're about to play the game. I mean, I've just, it's dawned on me now. I am now going to be sharing my tactics. So we'll, we'll see how this goes, just requesting the game. 
Uh, we'll see how we get on. We'll see how we get on here. It's a league game. We're doing it live. Probably going to back, uh, kind of blow up in my face here, but I've lost the last two. I've been in good form before that. Let's see what we can get done here. We're taking on DB Dynamos, currently sixth in our league. I think they're projected to have more points than us, but as I said, um, kind of my, my team in general, it's been being worked on. This is a chance for them to show you right here, right now, the progress that hopefully I've made since I started, because I do feel like I have made some progress. Of course, this is probably now going to just completely go wrong as we concede early on here. And um, oh, we go 1-0 down. It's not great. Say, hits it first time, the left back, he scores. I'm going to change something here. This is, a, this is a change which I've been doing a lot. And what I like to do is I like to drop one of the centre-backs deeper, then play a lot more defensive, play more direct, and then play a lot lower tempo. I feel like in some games where it's perhaps a little bit 50-50 or you know the, the other team's doing a little bit better than me, and uh, just because in general it seems like people like to attack, sometimes just sit and kind of deep defending and uh, kind of lumping it long to my more talented players and also the pace I have out wide. Uh, and it's kind of served me quite well, so we'll see if this works for us here. Marion heads the ball beyond the reach, it goes over the bar. For a second, I believed that Marion was going to do it for us, the centre-back. Ozcan ha has a chance. Can he place it? He can. It's 2-1. And, uh, well, that's a fairly good start. Action-packed, three goals. I would have rather that we kept it tight at the back. It looks like his goalkeeper isn't having the greatest of games right now. Ozcan Ozcan with two goals on his live com debut. Hopefully we can keep that going now. Of course, still a long time left in this game. 73 minutes. And Marlon Hubbard picking up a booking. Not really what I want to see, if I'm honest. Hopefully he can be well behaved now uh, for the rest of this game. And well, we've not had a goal in 10 minutes. The fans, they're not happy. <laughs> They've paid for entertainment. And well, we're, we're kind of just parking the bus a little bit and playing deep and trying to hit other teams on the break. But it's working for us right now at least. Although there's a one-on-one -on -one here. Mason to hit it first time. Can he score? He can't. He puts it over for Dynamos. And uh, well, 33 minutes gone. We're a third of the way through the game. We're 2-1 up. Ozkan Ozkan is having a pretty good game by his standards. He'll be looking for the hat trick. He's towering above the defenders. Heads it towards goal. Can he do it? He can't. He's terrible in the air, Ozkan. If he gets a header, just, just ignore the highlight. Not going to result in anything. 40 minutes gone, though. We're on top in this game. We are on top. You can see looking at the stats here. Um, possession, we are edging. We've had a few more shots on target. Fouls, we've committed more. But um, we do go in at half time with the goal lead. And I don't think there's too much I want to change just yet. In terms of the overall kind of team average ratings, it's been a little bit so so. I'm actually wondering, I might just bring in um, bring in Luke Reynolds to play uh, in place of Hubner. Just because I really don't want to get a player sent off. So that is what I'm going to do. I'm going to bring in Reynolds here. Still half time, so we'll just make that one change for now. Uh, I don't know if Dynamos are going to be making any, any changes here. You can see at the moment they are playing a 4 4 1 1, which, as I mentioned earlier, is kind of the system I toyed with initially, and that was mostly just to facilitate for the attacking midfielder who, who I had in my team called Kaun Inns, who was a Latvian player. He was 33 and a talented playmaker, but I, I, I just wasn't getting much success with him at centre attacking mid. He was always performing well, but at 33, I, I think I got a bit of a million pounds for him, which I took, and that's how much he ended up going for. So I was kind of happy with that. And, um, well, I'm hoping that in this game here, uh, we're not going to get undone by a, our old tactic. We'll see. It seems like Dynamos, they're looking to make some changes at half time. Uh, so we'll see how we go on here. They've already used their minute of half time. Um, but no, in terms of my general thoughts about this game, well, obviously I covered it all yesterday. If you, I said it earlier. If you missed that video and you've somehow got to this point and you've not been trying out this game, please go check out yesterday's video if this looks interesting to you. Uh, if you have been playing, let me know how you're getting on. If you've got until this point, let me know about your star player, what your team name is. Maybe I'll check that out. Um, I, I know people, I see them in the chat saying, Hi Jack, you know, how are you? And it's kind of cool to have that interaction with you guys whereby... Um, you will message me. I do get the odd message and I can have a little bit of a conversation with some of you guys who do message me about my players. Maybe they want to buy someone. Maybe they, they want just some general advice in the game, which to be honest, I don't feel quite qualified to give the answer for yet. Um, but it's something that I really am enjoying about this game, this kind of level of interaction. And especially with the negotiations, because I have done a fair few transfers, perhaps more than most people have done already kind of at this point. Uh, kind of having the, the kind of direct negotiations has been pretty interesting. I do feel like, in general, um, the, the deals that I've done have paid off for me. Now, will I be saying that, you know, in a season's time? Because perhaps after only a few weeks of doing some of those deals, and in some cases just a few days, it's too soon. I don't know. But uh, at the moment, I'm happy with the overall balance of my team. Um, I am digging it. 
I'm just hoping here that DB Dynamos are going to come back because they've been pausing it for the last minute and a half. And I don't know how much longer I can continue to talk, really. I feel like when, uh, if you ever played the game at secondary school, I think I did it in English once, where you're given a subject which you have to talk about continuously. That's almost how I feel here. But I'll tell you what I'm going to do. To spare your guys' kind of misery, I, I'm going to just shut up now, wait until the game resumes, and, uh, well, resume the live commentary then, because this is not going anywhere right now. Okay, so we're back underway. I don't know what's happened to the DB Dynamo's manager. He seems to have gone AFK. He's used up all his time here in the bottom right, so he can't really pause it to make any changes. Um, hopefully, uh, you know, he'll need time to make changes and we can capitalise on that, I guess. Uh, but no, 2-1 up. First 10 minutes of the second half. Not a lot happening. Fine by me. You know, I'll be happy to hold on for the 2-1 at this point. It's all about getting the three points. Uh, we did have a chance there at a counter-attack, although we did get tackled. And, uh, well, this guy, he's had a few few warnings. Alto, has he been booked? No, he hasn't. He's made two tackles so far in this second half. Maybe keep an eye out on him. But this has been a pretty standard game so far. We've limited their chances. We do have a chance here, although Alto making a superb tackle. And, actually, he's on a seven average rate. And he's one of the best players on the pitch right now, as soon as I mention him. A few bookings getting picked up for Dynamos, which is kind of interesting. A few bad tackles flying in as well. Perhaps a degree of frustration 20 minutes left in this game. I could probably can make some changes. There's a few players. Sayers is kind of struggling at right back. Let's make a change there. Stewart with a bad tackle. I'm going to bring it on. Who am I going to bring in at right back? I'm going to bring on Munoz at right back. Uh, talks about him kind of being a useful player for me, Munoz. Uh, perhaps better than some of my other players in the defence. But, um, yeah, I mean, I want to focus on the younger players and he is 31. So we'll bring him on, see if he can have an impact for us. He's coming on for the last 15 minutes here. 10 minutes left. We're still holding on to the lead. This second half, nothing's happened. We've been just kind of defensively in control of this entire game. It's been fairly comfortable. That's full time. One of the one of the duller games I've ever seen in this game, if I'm honest. But we've won it, and that doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how you win it. We have got the win. And that sees us win against a team who have been doing fairly well. I think DB Dynamo. As you can see it. They've won more than they've lost, which is something that we can't quite say yet. Although we have got nine wins, five draws, and nine losses. And um, yeah, we retain our second place at least for now. Anyway, guys, hopefully you did enjoy this video. Something different. I definitely think the format with this overall series needs a little bit of work, of course. Lots of talking to begin with about my team, but I feel like it's important to kind of get the background story behind some of my players. Hopefully you enjoy this kind of series as it progresses, kind of me documenting my uh, progress as a manager here in 90 Minute Fever. Uh, if you have enjoyed, leave a like. If you change anything, let me know down in the comments. If you have any questions about the game in general, uh, feel free to ask them. There'll be a link down in the description to yesterday's video, which you can check out on this game if you haven't already. And uh, yeah, other than that, thank you for watching, as I already said. It is me, Jack, and I will talk to you guys in a bit. I'm out.